What's up everybody? Um, this video clip is a very special one because I'm really going to let you guys into my real, real life. Not my, you know, on stage, rapper, cool guy, producer life, but a, a completely other part of me that is really who I am. And also a big invitation at the end of this video. Lights and cameras, kisses and lovers, you are what you act now, this is for a fact now. I'd like to start off pretty much in 1987. Uh, that's the year I was born. I want you to imagine a man that's pushing some ice cream in Chicago. It's 1987. You know what I mean? Get that visual. And that's my dad. My dad's pushing that uh, ice cream thing. <laughs> and um, Puerto Ricans, you know, it's called Piragua. So he was selling that. He was trying to make ends meet because he knew he had a baby on the way. So my dad was pushing that and all of a sudden a CTA bus stops and a woman comes off and she goes up to my dad frantically she's like I just had to get off I had to tell you something that God was telling me and God was telling me this that you're gonna have two sons uh, and it ended up being true that uh, my father had two sons which is me and my brother she continues to say and there will be preaching and there will be music and the world will be reached through that I remember hearing that, my dad told me that when I was about 11 or so, and I remember hearing that and, and knowing that, and something really striking me when I, when I heard that story, you know, the woman coming off the bus telling my dad that, out of nowhere. So, fast forward a couple of years, actually several years, and I'm 18 years old, right? Young 18 year old guy, break dancing, you know, I've been rapping, been making beats, uh, nobody really knew who I was, I just kind of, you know, college newspapers here and there. 18 years old, I stopped into this little church because I was teaching some kids how to break dance. So I would skip their church and actually just come afterwards to teach them how to break dance and stuff. So this time I actually stayed in the church service. So there was a guy preaching and, and they had said it was some, some guy from Guatemala who lived on a mountain or something. And uh, so I was like, cool, whatever, let, let me just listen to what this guy has to say. So as he's speaking, as many of you probably do when you're at church or something, you start zoning out, right? Uh, so I was zoning out and then I started talking to God in my head. I was like, God, if you could use this man right here to kind of confirm what I know already about my, what I'm supposed to do, you know, the gospel and music and preaching and all that stuff. So I was thinking that. And then at the end of my thought to God in my head, I said, but Lord, can you let me know I know this already? So, check this out. Actually, one minute after I thought that in my head and I'm sitting there, the guy stops speaking. The Guatemalan guy, the mountain guy, he stops speaking and then he looks straight at me and he says, he says, son, the spirit of the Lord has a word for you. He said, I see you on this stage and you're reaching many people, young and old. He mentioned music. But check out what he said at the end. He said, but you already know this, says the Spirit of the Lord. Once he said those key words, but you already know this, which is what I specifically asked God, like, can you let me know I know this? I was a rock from that moment on. Basically, long story short, guys, um, what you don't know about me is that I serve Jesus Christ and everything I have is because of him. My salvation, my eternity, all of that is due to him. And I live for him. So there's been a big call, uh, or what have you, on my life, and the Lord put on my heart, hardcore, uh, about a year, about a year now. We started meeting in the home as a church. People hearing the gospel being preached, we were on the street doing that. People were being brought to the Lord just, just because of the gospel. No lights, no show, no emotion. They were just, you're just coming to Jesus Christ. And fast forward. Um, it's about a year in, we've been in the house, close to a year, and I say a nonchalant prayer to God, and I'm like, God, you know, if, if we have a building to meet in, that would be cool, you know, to have more people and stuff, that would be pretty cool, but that was it. You know, I didn't have one of those prayers where like, God, we need a building now, we've been meeting in the home, but Lord, we need a building. No, it was none of that, it was nonchalant. So, uh, tell me why this is what happens. A week after that, I'm walking in the street with the boom box with another guy, and there is a, a big van that does a U-turn. I'm like, okay, what is this guy on? I know it's a church van because I see the big van and nobody really drives those on their own. So he turns around. The first thing he tells me is, hey man, you wanna use my building? Didn't know the guy at all. And mind you, I, I just prayed that a week ago about Lord, if we can have a building. The guy tells me, 
hey, you want to use my building straight up? That was the first thing he said. I'm in awe, even, even to this day. So that building that we're meeting at that I'm talking about, the address is 3608 North Pulaski. Not a huge building. It's not a building with the Virgin Mary or, or some type of symbolism of Jesus on a cross. None of that. It's a storefront there. And uh, yeah, 3608 North Pulaski, right in the corner of Addison and Pulaski. Saturday nights at 7, starting February 18th. If you feel strongly in your heart to go, go ahead. And uh, I really encourage you to, because you will come face to face with Jesus Christ, and you will get to know a God who talks back to his people. And I'm being completely honest with you guys. Um, take it or leave it again. If you live in Chicago or a nearby suburb, you're even closer. So I would love to see you. If you're from far out of town, and I've heard stories like this all the time where somebody feels like, man, I'm drawn to that, and they move and come straight to Chicago to be a part of a, a new thing or, or Kentucky or wherever it's at. So if you feel that too, come fly out and uh, be a part of what, what uh, man, what, what I'm so somberly excited for, and that's, man, people coming to know Jesus Christ and knowing that he is the only hope in this short life and that you are a soul, you just have a body. Uh, just as C.S. Lewis said. So, know that. And uh, I would love to see you guys there. I love you guys. And I just wanted to let you guys know about it, invite you, and let you know a little bit about me. Um, and yes, I'll, I'll be preaching there. So, I love you guys. Peace. What it is, life can leave you naked, life is full of fibs, life can leave you lonely, life is full of pain.